Well, howdy, everyone. Welcome back. It's excellent to see you again. We're going to leave the city today and head out to the farm. Would you like to join us? Let's go explore. Hello, families and children. My name is Mrs. Burdett, and I'm the pre-K teacher at Douglas MacArthur Girls Leadership Academy. I put my plaid shirt on, my bandana on. I'm going to put my hat on and my imagination. Can you put on your imagination too? Where do you think I'm ready to go? The farm. Are you ready to join me? Let's see what we can find at our farm today. Hello, who's there? Do you know where I am? I'm in a barn on the farm. Well, at least I'm using my imagination to pretend I am on a farm in a barn. But let me introduce you to some of my friends who you might find if you were ever on a farm. <gasps> this is a hen. Do you know what the hen says? Cluck, cluck. This is a duck. Do you know what the duck says? Quack, quack. This is a cat. The cat says, meow. The dog says, bow wow, bow wow. The pig says, oink, oink. The cow says moo. And finally, the horse says nay. And now we are going to read a story or sing a story. But before we do, I need to make sure you know some letters that are going to be in our story. E, I, E, I, O. Oh, very good. Do you know what story we are going to read today? If you guess Old MacDonald, you are right. And here's the barn, and the barn is on the farm. Old MacDonald, our title page. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on his farm he had a hen, E-I-E-I-O. With a cluck cluck here, a cluck cluck there, here a cluck, there a cluck, everywhere a cluck cluck. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on his farm he had a duck, E-I-E-I-O. With a quack quack here and a quack quack there. Here a quack, there a quack, everywhere a quack quack. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on his farm he had a cat, E-I-E-I-O. With a meow meow here and a meow meow there. Here a meow, there a meow, everywhere a meow meow. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on his farm he had a dog, E-I-E-I-O. With a bow wow here and a bow wow there. Here a bow, there a wow, everywhere a bow wow. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on his farm he had a pig, E-I-E-I-O. With an oink oink here and oink oink there. Here an oink, there an oink, everywhere an oink oink. 
Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. And on his farm he had a cow. E-I-E-I-O. With a moo moo here, a moo moo there. Here a moo, there a moo, everywhere a moo moo. Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. And on his farm he had a horse. E-I-E-I-O. With a nay-nay here, a nay-nay there. Here a nay, there a nay, everywhere a nay-nay. Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. They're tired just like I am after singing that song. I hope you had fun singing. Now, are you ready to do a craft? Now, we're ready for craft time. You will need some markers or crayons, construction paper, hmm, toilet paper tubes with the toilet paper taken off, some scissors, some glue, and if you'd like some cotton balls for one of our animals today, you can even use cotton balls. So the first thing you will do is take your toilet paper roll with the toilet paper off and you will cut it in half. Remember when you hold your scissors, your thumb goes through the small oval and either two or three, sometimes even four fingers can fit into the big oval and you always hold the point of your scissors away from you when you cut. Your thumb always goes on top. All right. So you have just cut your cylinder into two halves, and now you have two cylinders. We are going to turn these little cylinders into farm animals. Are you ready? So this is about two inches. So I measured two inches on my paper and drew a line across. And then I'm going to cut across that line. And I will glue, I'm gonna use my glue stick, and I will glue, put glue on the back of that paper so it's all nice and sticky. And then I will Stick it onto my little tube there. All right, I am going to turn this one into the farmer's cat. So from some of that extra paper, you might want to make some little triangle ears. Triangles have three sides. And then we are going to stick those on our top part of our going to be cat. Need a little more glue here. And if you don't have glue, remember you can use your uh, tape or regular white glue. So we have that so far. And now our cat needs a little face. Cats have two eyes. They have a little nose. And they have a mouth. And they have whiskers. Maybe this cat has stripes. So you could put stripes all around his body. So that will be one animal for my farm. Now, whoops. <laughs> You can make a variety of other animals. You might use, I said, cotton balls. You can take apart cotton balls and make a little sheep. You can make a cow. You can use your paper and your tube and make 
a hen or a chicken. You can make a pig. And you can make a duck. And when you're all done, you could take a cereal box, cut it out, turn it inside out. And you could even make your own little barn for your animals to play in. So I hope you had fun making your craft today. We will now see what Miss Duplissy has in store for us. Hello, boys and girls. I'm feeling extra excited to learn with you today. We are going to segment the phonemes in our farm animal words. This means we're gonna break apart the words by each sound we hear in the word. Next, we're gonna see what letters make the sounds in the words. And we're even gonna take a trip to see some animals on the farm. Are y'all ready? Let's go. What sounds do you hear in the word hen? <sighs> eh. Mmm. There are three sounds in the word hen. Let's figure out what letters make those sounds. Hmm. <sighs> H. Eh. E. N. N. H. E. N. <sighs> eh. N. Hen. Duck. What sounds do you hear in duck? D. A. Uh, Hmm. D, D. D, a, a, u, k. The digraph CK says k at the end of duck. D, U, C, K, D, a, k, duck. Let's try another one. Cats. K. A. T. There are three sounds in cats. Let's figure out what letters make those sounds. K. K. C. A. A. T. 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 Very good. K. A. T. Cat. Dog D A G Let's see what letters make those sounds D D D D A O G G, G, very good. D O G spells dog. D A G, dog. Pig. P. I. G. What letters make those sounds? P, 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 I, 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 G, G, G. P, I, G spells pig. P, I, G, pig.
you're doing great. Let's try another one. Cow. K. Ow. Hmm, tricky one, huh? K, k, k. C. Hmm, how do we get that ow sound? O, W. K, ow. Cow. All right, last one, horse. <sighs> or s. Let's think of the letters that make those sounds. <sighs> H, or is made by that team, O-R, and s with an S. And of course we have the silent E at the end. Break it down, break it down, break it down, break it down. Say the word and say the sounds. Break it down. Hand. Duck. Duck. Uh-huh. I had a great time learning and exploring with you today. Let's see what Mrs. Kitchen has in store. Thank you, Mrs. DePlissy. Hi, my name is Mrs. Kitchen and I'm a kindergarten teacher at Louisa May Alcott Elementary School. Today, we're gonna talk about animals that live on the farm, the jobs they have, and the things that they provide us with. But first, let's talk about services. The word service means work that someone does for someone else. Farmer McDonald provides a service and his job is to make sure that we get all of those good things that he has on his farm in the grocery stores and in the markets. So let's go down on the farm and learn a little bit more about the animals old McDonald has and the things that they provide us with. Down on the farm. A farm is a very busy place with lots of work to be done. Here is old McDonald. On his farm, we will find many kinds of animals. Today, we will learn about what these animals give us. Let's take a look at the animals we will learn about on old McDonald's farm. There are cows, chickens, cats, ducks, pigs, horses, sheep, and you will even find 
dogs, and cats. The farm is a very busy place, and each animal has a job, a special job. Let's learn about the horse. Horses work on the farm. They might pull a wagon, help move heavy loads, or provide a ride. Chickens live on the farm too. They are oviparous. That means they lay eggs. The female chicken is called a hen, and hens give us eggs. Dairy cows are raised to give us milk. Cheese, yogurt, and ice cream are all made from the milk that we get from the dairy cow. Cows can also be raised for their beef, steaks, hamburger, beef ribs, and roast are all things we get from the cow. Now let's learn about the sheep. Sheep give us wool. The farmer will shear the sheep. Shear means they give the sheep a haircut to remove their fleece or wool. The sheep really love this because it makes them feel cooler during the summer. After the fleece is collected, it is dyed different colors and spun into yarn. We use the yarn to make coats, mittens, gloves, hats, and sweaters for us to wear. These clothes keep us nice and warm. Pigs or hogs live on the farm too. They are raised for their meat. This meat is called pork. Pork is used to make sausage, bacon, and ham. I know you recognize this animal. Yes, it's the dog. Dogs on the farm have a special job too. Dogs may help the farmer round up the cattle and round up the sheep. They fetch the sheep and help guide them in the direction that the farmer would like them all to go. Dogs also guard the other animals to keep them safe from wild animals that may want to hurt them. Even the cat has a special job. Their job is to keep away rodents like mice and rats. Ducks can also be found on Old McDonald's farm. Ducks are oviparous, just like the hens. Do you remember what oviparous mean? Yes, it means they lay eggs. Ducks give us eggs. Down on the farm, the animals all have special jobs. Many of them give us things we use or eat, and these things are also known as goods. Earlier, we talked about the word service, and we said that Farmer McDonald provides a service, and his service that he provides is taking care of all the animals so that they can provide us with goods. So what are goods? Goods are things that we make or buy, or we use or keep. So let's take a closer look at some of the animals and see if we can think about the goods that they provide us. Let's take a look at the pictures we have here. We have sheep, hens or chickens, a cow, and then there's a pig. I have some pictures of things that are goods. Let's see if you can help me match them to the right animal. The first thing I have here is bacon. Do you remember what animal we get bacon from? That's right, the pig. So we're gonna put it in the pocket right next to the pig. Here's the next one. What animal give us wool to make warm clothes to wear? Absolutely, the sheep. The sheep give us wool. 
so that we can make warm things to wear. Our next one is milk. Do you remember where milk comes from? Awesome job. Milk, we get the milk from a cow and we're gonna put it right next to the cow. And our last picture that we have are eggs. Yeah, you got it. The hens lay eggs. And there was one more animal that was oviparous like the hen. Do you remember the name of that animal? That's correct. Ducks also lay eggs. Good job. That was excellent. You did an exceptional job today. And I'm excited to find out what you'll be learning from Mrs. Anderson today. Thank you for coming and have a great time. Excellent job, Miss Kitchen. I'm Mrs. Anderson, physical education teacher at Douglas MacArthur Girls Leadership Academy. Let's get ready to move. I just came in from the hen house. We're gonna juggle. Who am I trying to kid? My bag's blue, gray, and white. This is gonna help me make a pattern. Let's begin with two. I have a blue and a white. I'm gonna cross my center line and I am gonna catch with my opposite hand. Toss, toss, catch, catch. Toss, toss, catch, catch. Now, after I've used both of my hands, I'm gonna hold two and one. I'm gonna use my pinchers, my thumb and my pointer in one, and I'm gonna hold the second bag with my others. I am gonna toss the white, and before it comes down and I catch it, I need to toss the blue. White, blue, white, blue. So now we're gonna do all three bags. I'm gonna hold the white with my three fingers. I'm gonna hold the blue and then I have my gray. So I'm always gonna begin with the hand that has the two bags. And my pattern here is blue, gray, white. Blue, gray, white. Blue, gray, white, blue, gray, white, blue, gray, white. You following me? I need you to have all three of your bags so that you can juggle too. Juggle along with me. Blue, gray, white. So our second activity that we're gonna do today we have our balloons. Just a simple balloon and we add in some barnyard faces. This is my friend, Coach T. She is a physical education teacher at Howard School. So, we have our balloons here and we are very gently, we're gonna tap that balloon with our left, with our right, with our elbow. How many taps can you use so our next activity, we made some patterns. We used a paper plate, a, a spoon, or a spatula, taped it to the back, and made a barnyard face. We're going to use a paddle to keep that balloon in the air. <gasps> Wait, I have an idea. Let's take turns. We'll use your duck.
So our last activity, we're gonna dance. The chicken dance, we have four basic movements that we're gonna use. We make our chicken beaks, our chicken wings, we shimmy shimmy, and we clap three times. And then we're gonna add in a skip. And remember when we skip, we pick up our knees, and we add in a little hop. I hope you had fun today, and I hope that you keep on moving. Let's see what excellent ideas Ms. Maslowski has for you. Thank you, Mrs. Anderson. Your exercises were so much fun. I'm Ms. Maslowski, and I'm the pre-K teacher at William Rainey Harper School. And today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about graphs. Now, you might be wondering, what is a graph? A graph is a picture or a chart that helps you to understand mathematical concepts a little bit better than just numbers and words. So let's look at our pictures up here. We are going to use these to create a graph. Here's our graph. We are going to create a bar graph today. Now, something's missing from the top of our graph. Hmm, what's missing? You're right, it's the title. So we need to think of a title for our graph. So let's look at the pictures. What do you think we're gonna be talking about today? Because that should be the title of our graph. Hmm, are they butterflies? No. Are they different kinds of flowers? No. What are they? <laughs> You're right, they are farm animals. So that would be the perfect name for our graph. So the first thing that we're gonna do is write the title, Farm Animals. Great job, now we have our title. Next, what we need to do is gather the information from our pictures. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is sort the animals so that I know how many each one of them there are. So what does sort mean? Hmm, sort means we're gonna put them into groups by something they have in common. So I'm gonna put them into groups about what kind of animal they are. That's not hard. Can you help me? All right, we're gonna have a cow group. So I have to find all my cows and move them into the cow group. Great job. I have another one down here. Very good. Next, I'm gonna make the chicken group or the hen group. So I'm gonna move all my chicken and hens into this group. or put them all together. Great job. Next, we're gonna create the cat group. We gotta move our pig out of the way. Good job. 
next we'll have our horse group. And last group is gonna be what? The pig group. Excellent job. Okay, now that our animals are sorted, we're gonna create our graph. So looking at our graph, what is the first animal that we need to find? Very good, that is a cat. So we look at it to our groups and here are our cats. Can you help me count how many cats we have? One, two, three, four. Excellent job, four cats. So we come on over to our graph and we have to color four boxes because there are four cats. So I'm gonna color. One, two, three, four. Great job. Let's look at our next animal. What is that? That is a pig. So let's come on over and find our pig group. Here it is. Count with me, how many pigs are there? One, two, three. Excellent job, three pigs. So how many of the squares are we gonna have to color above the pig? You got it, we're gonna color three. So come on over and color. One, two, Three. Great job. Okay, let's look at our next animal. What is that? That is a cow. Perfect. Let's look at our cow group up here and count. How many cows? One, two, three, four. Great job. There are four cows. So we come on back over to our graph and we're gonna color four boxes. One, two, three, four. Great work, you are doing such an awesome job helping me to make this graph. Let's move to our next animal. What is that? You are right, it is a chicken. So let's go to our chicken group and count how many chickens. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six chickens, very good. So let's count on the graph and I'm gonna make a little mark so I remember there are six. So I have to color one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna to have to come way up here. And I just made those marks like that so I remember what I'm going to color. It helps me organize it a little bit. Three, here's four, five, and six. Great job. All right, let's look at our last animal that we have. And what is that? It is a horse, very good. So let's look over at our picture groups and find our horses. Can you count the horses with me? One, two, excellent job. So let's move over back to our graph and color two boxes. One, two, very good. Now we're gonna use our graph to help solve some problems and it'll be fun, I promise. All right, so looking at our graph, which animal has the most? Most is the biggest. Which animal has the most? You are right, it is the chicken. And how do you know 
by looking at the graph that the chicken has the most. Very good. It is the tallest bar on the graph. Great job. Okay, here's another question. Hmm. Which animal has the least amount? Least means little or small. So which animal has the least amount? You are right, it is the horse. The horse only has two. And you could tell on the graph because it is the shortest of all the lines that are made. Very good. Okay, here's a hard question. Are any animals equal? What does equal mean? Hmm. You're right, equal means that they are the same. Do any of the animals have the same number? Hmm. I see two, the cat and the cow. They both have four. And using the graph, you could tell they are both the same, the same exact height. So those two are equal. Great job. Now we can also use a graph to help solve some addition problems. You wanna try one with me? It's not that hard. I know you could do it. All right, so the farmer wants to know how many pigs and cows that he has. So let's look at our graph. How many pigs? Let's count. One, two, three. Three pigs. And how many cows? Let's count. One, two, three, four. So how many pigs and cows does the farmer have? Well, let's count them all together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The farmer has seven pigs and cows. Did you have fun making a graph with me today? I hope you did. I had a great time working with you. Now, I wonder what Miss Dunlap will have in store for you. I hope it's very exciting. Are you ready for an extra good time learning about animals? Me too. It's me, Miss Dunlap from Bureau Dual Language. I'm back again. I'm so excited you're here to learn with me. So wasn't that story on McDonald's farm such a great story about all the different animals? I love learning about animals, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about how to classify animals. Hmm, are you ready? Let's start learning. So what does it mean to classify animals? Well, first, what does classify mean? That's a big word. Well, to classify means we sort into groups, and each group shares certain characteristics. What are characteristics? Well, characteristics are traits. They're ways we describe people, places, and things. When we classify animals, we use these characteristics or traits to see what animals have in common so that we can classify them or separate them into groups. Let's see if we can practice with something besides animals. Let's take a look at the items in this one group or category. I see pizza, a popsicle, an apple, a hamburger, and salad. What do these objects or items all have in common that we could classify them into the same group? What do these objects have in common? That's right, they're all types of food. The apple, the hamburger, the pizza, the popsicle, the salad, these are all items that we can eat. So we classify them as types of food. Okay, that's what they have in common. Let's see if we could do this one more time. Let's look at our next group. We classified these objects into the same group or category based on how we use them. Their characteristics, what they have in common. I see a crayon, glue, scissors, pencil, and some notebook paper. How do we classify these objects? That's right. 
They're school supplies. These are learning tools. They help us learn in school. We were able to group these items in the same category based on how we use them. And we use these items or objects to learn. The scissors, notebook, pencil, crayon, glue, right? Okay, I think you're ready to take this classifying business to animals. Let's go. We're going to talk about animals that have vertebrae or bones that protect their spinal cords in their back. We have that, we call it our backbone. It helps us stand up nice and tall. Can you feel yours? Many animals have this backbone. We call these animals vertebrates. And we can classify these animals into five categories or classes. Mammals, reptiles, amphibians, birds, and fish. As you can see, we're just focusing on animals that have a backbone, okay? The vertebrates. And these animals we've broken down into five smaller categories or classes. Mammals, reptiles, amphibians, birds, and fish. Okay, let's go ahead and learn about mammals. What characteristics or trait do these animals all share so that we can classify them as mammals? Well, mammals have hair or fur. That helps keep them warm. Mammals also have babies. They do not lay eggs. They also feed their babies milk. Mammals are what we call warm-blooded animals. When an animal is warm-blooded, it means that their body temperature stays constant or stays the same, no matter how hot or how cold it is outside. That's why it's so important for mammals to have hair or fur on their body to help them stay warm when it's cold out, right? Kind of like how we put on a coat, hat and gloves. Okay, now I'm gonna give you a quick little quiz here, okay? If we have a sheep or a chicken, which one's the mammal? <laughs> That's right. We know that the chicken cannot be the mammal. Chickens have feathers. Mammals have hair or fur. And mammals do not lay eggs like chickens. Good job. All right, let's keep learning. Look at these animals. They're reptiles. What characteristics do they all share? Reptiles have scales. They don't have hair or fur. Reptiles usually lay eggs. They also have dry skin. Reptiles are what we call cold-blooded animals. Reptiles are cold-blooded. When you're cold-blooded, it means your body temperature changes with the outside temperature, okay? It changes with your environment. So if it's really hot out, your body temperature rises or increases. Okay, and if it's really cold out, your body temperature lowers or decreases with the cold temperature. So based on what we learned today, okay, which animal is a reptile? The penguin or the crocodile? That's right, the crocodile, right? Crocodile has that dry, scaly skin, right? A penguin has feathers. You're really good at this. So how do we classify amphibians into the same category? Let's look at these characteristics. Amphibians have moist skin and webbed feet. Those webbed feet come in handy because amphibians live in water and on land. Amphibians lay many, many eggs, but not with hard shells. They're smoother. Amphibians are also cold-blooded animals. So we learned that amphibians also have webbed feet. It's really important because they don't just live on land, they live in water. So I'm gonna ask you a question, okay? Which animal is the amphibian? The frog or the dog? You're right, it's the frog. Why can't the dog be an amphibian? A dog does have fur. Do amphibians have fur? Nope. No, no, no. 
Amphibians have moist, smooth skin. Good job. All right, let's go to the next set of animals. Let's look at how we classify these animals into the birds category. Birds have feathers and wings. Birds also lay eggs. Those eggs have the hard shells. Birds also have two legs with very light bones. Birds are warm blooded. Birds are warm blooded just like mammals, except birds don't have hair or fur to keep them warm. They have, you're right, they have feathers. And if it gets too cold, they just fly away for the winter, don't they? Okay, based on the information that you learned today about birds, which animal is the bird? The duck or the turtle? <laughs> the duck. We classify fish in the same group because they have scales and fins. Fish lay many, many eggs and these eggs do not have the hard shells. Fish live in the water so they breathe with gills, not lungs. And fish are cold blooded. Did you notice that fish have scales just like reptiles? They do, except fish live in the water so they also have fins. All right, so which one's the fish? The snake or that guy? That was too easy. Okay, after we leave today, I want you to go ahead and get a piece of paper and draw your most favorite animal, okay? And think about that animal. Is your animal a mammal, a reptile, an amphibian, a bird or fish? Go ahead and label your picture. So I drew a rabbit and I labeled my picture a mammal because a rabbit is a mammal. Now, I could go ahead and draw my rabbit's habitat later on, and so could you. But then I want you to teach it to your family based on what we learn. So if I were to teach why my rabbit is a mammal to my family, I would explain, well, the rabbit has hair and fur, and rabbits don't lay eggs. They have little bunnies, right? I want you to go ahead and do the same. Now, maybe your favorite animal is a rabbit, but maybe it's not. I want you to draw your favorite animal. I had a wonderful time learning with you today and I can't wait to learn with you again. You did a great job. I'll see you soon. Well, hey kids, I hope you had an extraordinary time today. I hope you had fun on the farm with us.
saying hello and greetings. We miss you, we love you. Hope that you are staying active during your time at home. A couple exercises you can do, jumping jacks, jump ropes, running in place, arm circles, maybe a couple lunges. Stay safe, Adelaide Stevenson. See you soon.